Hill Cornerstone friends. How are y'all? This first song, um, how many have ever heard this song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? I see your hands. How many of you ever have actually read the words in this song? I went since I was a little girl singing this song, but it wasn't until a friend of mine was having brain surgery and I was really upset and crying and praying to the Lord to, you know, put his healing hand on this friend of mine. And it just led me to start singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And it says in light, um, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Hello. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Wow, what a message. So I'm going to try to sing that. And y'all can sing with me if y'all want to stand up or sit. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. A privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain. Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Let's do it one more time. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit because all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer y'all can be seated isn't that a cool song I never, never heard the I never really I never really paid attention to the words. I just sang because we were singing. But what a privilege we have to take everything to God in prayer. This one is called Didn't I Walk on the Water. This is a cool song. Brother Jim actually asked me to do this one a long time ago. That's not my CD. Well, I'll tell you the story of this song real quick. How many of you have grandchildren or children and and you've been in the pool with them and you're going like this, come on, jump to me, jump to me, and they're apprehensive to jump. They don't know if they can trust or not. I'm, You know, you know you're the parent. You're the dad. You're the father. Well, this reminds me of, of how... You know, God says, well, didn't I do this? Well, didn't I do that? Can't you just trust me with this little bitty thing? Go ahead, Brother Harvey. Number six. If it's not, I'll fake it. That's it. As I kneel in the darkness... In the middle of the night, 
I'm praying for assurance everything's gonna be all right and Lord I see another battle it's out in front of me and I'm afraid I won't be able and I'll go down in defeat and he said do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you at how far you've come. Oh, and every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? Didn't I walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, it hushed and it gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Now she's talking to her father in a house that was once a home my bills are coming due lord and six days is not that long she hears a voice so soft and low he said i've moved like that before and i'll do this little thing oh and i'll give you so more didn't i walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind. It hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven? Just to die for your sin. I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Love our music as we prepare to come into worship. So before we start tonight, hopefully when you came in, you got an outline entitled Heart Check or Cardiogram Heart Check. Uh, we're going to be running through a uh, list of things to do a check on our hearts. Where are we at? Where are we at in our, in our walk? With Jesus, where we at in our salvation? Uh, so before we get started, uh, it's Wednesday night, and Wednesday night is prayer night. Let's let's be sure that we uh, lift those up in need. And I've got a, a list tonight. Uh, there's many uh, that I'm not going to mention because we 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 know who they are. Uh, uh, we've got a long list that we've gone over uh, many times. It, it's not that they're not important. Uh, but we let's 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 talk about some new needs, and let's remember those those past needs, right? Uh, Jan Botterford, I don't know if many of you are aware, she has got shingles, uh, pretty bad. Uh, my mother-in-law went and visited her yesterday, and and Jan asked for prayer. She is she is hurting, so she's over at Garnet Hill, and uh, she 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 needs our prayers, uh, and she needs a touch from Jesus. 
Uh, we want to continue lifting up Ricky Nelson. He's, uh, I believe, is he in Oklahoma still, Michael? Do you know? Okay. Okay. He got out of the hospital Monday, but his blood work's all messed up, so he's asked that we pray for him there. Uh, my daughter, Caitlin, started flight attendant school today. Six weeks of boot camp to become a flight attendant for American Airlines. Pray for her. You know, she's nervous. Uh, you know, we, we assured her that God does not give, it a spirit, give us a spirit of fear. And, but, you know, hey, uh, only so many people, I guess, make it through it. Uh, I don't know what the percentage is, but we're confident Caitlin's going to do great. Uh, it's great to have Harvey back in the sound booth with us tonight. Uh, Harvey, you are, uh, yes, yes, it's always, we missed Harvey when he wasn't here. Uh, it was great to see him show back up Sunday, and here he is tonight. Knee replacement, and he's, uh, he's not using his walker tonight. Sunday, he, he came in with the walker. Tonight, he, he came in strong. So, amen, amen, Harvey. So good to see you, brother. Ed Brown, we want to continue lifting him up. He's home, uh, but he, he wants to be here, so let's, let's continue lifting him up. The Thompson family, uh, Kent Thompson passed away this week. We need to remember the Thompson family. Uh, his niece uh, it was uh, Tana Jo. Uh, Trent and Terry are, are, are members here. Their daughter passed, uh, gosh, 23, 24 years ago from cancer. And now uh, Trent's twin brother, Kent, passed from with cancer uh, same week. Uh, and it's uh, on top of that, it's, it's Billy's uh, uh, birthday was this week as well. Yeah, on his birthday. Tana Joe passed away on his birthday. Did, did Kent pass away on the same day or when did the same? Okay, yeah. So that's... Okay, same day. So, uh, you know, tragic for Bill, for Billy, Billy Thompson, because obviously his granddaughter and now one of his sons. So lift them up. Uh, the tables are set up over here. The service will be here on Friday, and if you can come out to support them, that'd be be great. Uh, they are they are two o'clock. Is it two o'clock, Harvey? Do you know? Two o'clock. Two o'clock on Friday, uh, and they are founding members of Cornerstone. So. Food, if you're making dishes for them, they need food by 11. I think they're serving them chicken, and they need sides, desserts, things like that. Okay, so they'll be eating here at 12. Okay. Thank you, Miss Jan. We want to lift up, continue lifting up your son, Chris. Uh, grandson, I'm sorry. You're so young, I, you know, I just think of him as your son. So. Miss Darlene, how's your great-granddaughter? Is she still in the hospital? Is she home now? Okay, she, the great-granddaughter, again, many of you know, she was born premature. She's got a feeding tube now. She's home, but she's got a heart surgery scheduled for May 19th. So we want to lift her up. We want to lift that little baby up. She's getting stronger, but that's gonna, that heart surgery is really going to help her. So any other prayer requests? What did I hear? Shorty, oh, Shorty Dillard, yes, he's in the hospital. Uh, he's got lymphoma, and they believe it got into his spinal fluid, up into his brain. And so he's, he's struggling. He was having some double vision. Uh, I saw a picture of him, I think, on Facebook. He's got a patch over his eye. He, you know, he's making the best of it. He's, he's got a pirate patch, so that's the way he called it, you know. Uh, well, you know, we can have a positive outlook or, or we can be gloom, doom, and despair. And, and they're, choosing to, they're choosing to focus on the positive. Yes, Walter? Autumn Miller and Michael Miller. Autumn had throat surgery. They think that they're, they're hoping there's no damage in there, but she just had that today? Okay, yesterday. So just let's lift, let's lift Autumn up for healing. And yes, Michael.
Okay, Michael's got a friend that's a veteran and, and experienced some traumatic stuff up in Oklahoma, so he's maybe suffering some, from some PTSD, so we want to lift him up. Yes, Lisa? Your cousin's wife has breast cancer? Brain cancer. Oh, gosh. Kimmy? Jenny. Jenny. Okay. Her, cousin, Jenny. Her cousin's wife, Jenny. All right. Well, you know what? Jesus is in the, in the business of answering prayers, so we will lift them up. At the end of the night, when we get in our prayer circles, let's remember those needs. Uh, Michael, would you lift us up tonight before we start? Amen. Thank you, Michael. Well, as I said when you came in, I hope you got an outline. Uh, we've got some good information. And, uh, yeah, we're going for a cardiogram tonight. You're here for a heart check. And John has got the, uh, he's got the solution for us. In 1 John, we're reading from uh, chapter 3, and we're going to be reading 16 through 24. So if you can stand, please be upstanding. And if you can't, please remain seated and just follow along with us. That would be great. So God's Word says, By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children... Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in us, and he in him, and by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. Heavenly Father, as we do our heart check tonight, please, please speak to us. Please, if our hearts are hard, soften it so that we receive this word. And Lord, help us to go out and share the good news with a lost world. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. So, tonight, as we conduct this cardiogram, our heart check. We're going to look at nine checkpoints to see how healthy we are as believers. What's the condition of our hearts? And remember, remember, in this letter, 1 John, he's writing to believers. So I, I believe that we're all believers in this room. Some, some may be struggling with that. If you're online, maybe, maybe you're not quite sure what a believer is. And you're, you're seeking to find out. Well, tonight, John's going to give us a heart test, and, and we're going to see. Where do we stand in our beliefs? We're going to find out, am I truly a believer? And, and am I following God's plans for my life? So as we look at this, uh, as we perform this exam, we're going to see how healthy our hearts are in relation to our walk with Christ. And, and possibly, as I mentioned, some of us might see that, that we're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, if this is you, take heart, because a cure is at hand. So as we jump into our, our test tonight, our first heart check is, is number one, do you care for others? Care for others. And in verse 16, this is what John said to us. He said, by this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, 
And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You know, as you read this, point A, are you sharing the good news? Do you share the good news? That's a, a check for caring for others, sharing the good news. Well, what's the good news? John 3.16, Jesus told us. Jesus told us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's good news. That's good news that we should be sharing with others. Well, in John 10, 11, Jesus goes on and he says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. So we've got to ask ourselves, in this first heart check is do we care for others are are we sharing this message with our lost friends and our, and our lost family members are we sharing the good news of Jesus you know acts 2024 20, says this life is worth nothing unless i use it for doing the work assigned me by the lord jesus the work of telling others the good news about god's mighty kindness and love that's what Paul tells us in Acts. Well, so if we care for others, are we sharing the good news? But secondly, are, do we abide? Abide in the love of Christ. You know, we've heard that word abide quite a few times in John's writing here. But in John 15, 13, this is what Jesus said. Again, this is our Savior talking. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And John com confirmed that again in verse 16 when, when he repeated what, what Jesus shared. You know, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Uh, when we think about this, our opening heart test. You know, we ended our last study with John comparing hate to murder. He did. He said, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. You might as well be a murderer. And he used the example of Cain and Abel. But tonight, we open up the heart exam by looking at the exact opposite of hate, which is love. That's polar opposite of each other. And we see that the ultimate sign of love is to lay down one's life for others. And, you know, Jesus gave the ultimate example of this, of love by giving his life for the sins of a lost world. You know, we can look at Calvary's cross, and that is a picture of love. That's a picture of giving one's life for the brethren. That was Jesus. And he, you know, his, uh, Jesus, he's, that, he's our ultimate example, and we ought to, that's how we ought to live our lives. Well, fortunately in America today, I don't know what tomorrow looks like, but today we don't have to give our lives on the cross. We don't face that persecution today, but we ought to, Think about it like that. You know, Jesus was willing to go to the cross for us. He was willing to be that sacrifice. So as we look at what John's telling us and what Jesus has told us, what does it look like to lay down our life for others? Well, John, uh, I believe when he was writing, writing his message and repeating what Jesus said, he, he had a lot more in mind than just a physical death. You know, that can apply. Obviously, physical death can apply. Are you willing to lay down your life for your brother? But it also means helping those in needs through action and in truth. Well, you know what? The actions are our love. Are we reflecting Jesus? And in the truth, are we sharing Jesus with others? You know, James 1.22 tells us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Okay? Love is more than a feeling. It's an action or a desire for helping others. True love is helping others. And, and as, as we get further into our message here, the next two points, verses 17 and 18, they're going to add some details about how to help others in need. How can we help others in need? How can we show the love of Jesus? How can we show that we care for others and, and show that God's love abides in us? Well, as we get into these points, we're going to see. So that takes us to heart check number two. Are you a companion of Christ? Are we a companion of Christ? You know, verse 17 says, But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts his heart from him, how, how 
does the love of God abide in him? How can you look at somebody and see them struggling and just walk by them? How does the love of God abide in him? As we think about this, do you have a, a point number A? Do you have a heart for those in need? A heart for those in need. Deuteronomy 15, 7. This is, this is what God's word says. You shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother. We should help those in need. We should help them in need. And John gives us a direct answer in that verse to show that God's love abides in us. But he gives us the answer in the form of a question. You know, you go back and read that verse and he says... But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? In other words, he's saying, you know what, if you have, if you have the world's goods, if you, if you are financially able, if you, are health, if you have the health to be able to reach out and help someone, to, to give them a helping hand, and because you see them in need, and you, shut, you, you can't shut your heart from them, you have to help them. That's what Jesus says. That's what John is telling us. And I love that, that he answered it in the form of a question. How does the love of God abide in you? If you can just walk by somebody that needs help and, and just turn your heart to them, turn your head from them. So as, as we look at that, uh, you know, this is a person who has more than enough to meet his or her own needs but chooses to be hard-hearted. You know what? Chooses to be uncaring and chooses to walk away. You know, if when we keep material things for ourselves beyond our needs while others suffer and we see it happening, that shows a serious lack of love. It does. And and if if you if if you find yourself not having a heart for others, uh, you might put a, a question mark on that. Do I have a heart for those in need? Do I am I a companion of Christ? Because Christ was willing to help. Christ helped everyone that he came in contact with. In fact, again, he went on the cross for us. That's our Jesus. And a believer in Christ should have concern for the needs of others and not just by feeling sorry for them. You know, again, we see John talking about abiding in God's love. Christians, believers, you know what? Believers are capable of sin. So it's possible for a believer to be stingy. It's possible for a believer to be cold-hearted or even unloving. It's possible. You know what? But that's a huge, huge sign of someone not abiding in Christ. If you're unloving, uncaring, you're not abiding in Christ or in God's love. And this attitude, it doesn't reflect a relationship with Jesus. And it's, it's hard to say that you're a Christian. It's hard to show the love of Jesus if you're not loving others. And cold-heartedness and hatred are signs of a, of a sick heart. So do you have a heart for others? Well, you know, we've looked at do you care for others? Are you a companion for Christ? But thirdly, does your character reveal kindness? Does your character reveal kindness? And in verse 18, this is what John, John says to us. I love this, my little children. Here he is talking to the students again, us as students, us as believers. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And as we look at deed and in truth, does your character point A, does it speak love without action? Does your character speak love without action? That's not a good sign. That's not. Ezekiel 33, 31 says, For with their mouth they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Are you out for self-gratification? Are you out for, is it, is it about you? You know, me, me, me. I want, you know, it's all about me. Uh, or do you speak love with action? You know, the point B says, do you show your faith? Character that reveals kindness, do you show your faith? James 2.18 says, I will show you my faith by my works. You know what? If I've got to tell you what I'm doing, I'm, I'm self-gratifying myself. If you see what I'm doing and it's for Christ, that's showing the love, right? 
I don't need to pat myself on the back and go, yeah, I just did this. Do y'all believe I just donated to that? Wow, you know, I gave a whole lot or, or whatever. It's not about that. When you help somebody out of love, it's, we're, we're trying to please our Father. Yes, ma'am. A was speak love without action. So, so your character, if, does your character reveal kindness? Do you speak love without action, which that's not a good character to have, or do you show your faith, which is a good action, which is a good, good, re, a good reference of character? And it's important to communicate love through our words. It is. You know, my wife loves to hear me tell her that I love her. And you know what, Miss Darlene, you know, when I came in tonight, I told you I love you. You know what? Love is a powerful word, but it's also a powerful action. And you know what? I can say, yeah, I love you. Yeah, I sure do. Do I look like I love you? Am I acting like I love you? Or, hey, I love you, brother, you know, sister, you know. Show love. we got to show it. We have to show it. And, you know, that's through our actions. And Jesus gave a similar warning to the Pharisees in Matthew 15, 8, when he told them, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Jesus called the Pharisees out. And you know what? Truly saving faith will produce good works as James 2.18 tells us. He says, show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. Truly loving another person will produce actions. That will produce loving actions. So, uh, and as we look at Jesus as our role model, you know what? Jesus not only spoke about love, because Jesus spoke about love a lot, but his actions matched every word he said. And in John 13, whenever Jesus cleaned the disciples' feet, we saw an example when he washed their feet to teach them to serve each other in humility. He said, you know what? I didn't come to be served. I came to serve others. How do you show love by serving others? I'm going to wash your feet. And they were astounded. Wow, what a move. You didn't tell us to do it. You showed us to do it. And, and then his death on the cross. I've already mentioned that. But that offered the most powerful evidence of love in deed and in truth. You know, he endured suffering. He endured ridicule. He endured death from those who should have been recognizing him as the Messiah. Us, we were at the foot of the cross when Jesus took, the, took our sins. We were. He did that for us. Love in action. But the ultimate, ultimate love in action was two Sundays ago. His actions also included his resurrection. His resurrection, the ultimate backing up of your words through action. You know what? I'm willing to die for you, but guess what? I'm going to come back for you. I'm coming back, and, and while he hasn't, returned for the second time he came back the first time we can be sure he's coming back a second time that promise will hold true so you know what Jesus is our ultimate example and words through actions but our fourth test tonight our fourth test do we have certain assurance John asks us do you have certain assurance well verse 19 and by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. And as we look at this, point A is, do we hear his voice? Do you have that assurance? Do you hear his voice? When you pray, when you, when you talk, do you hear him talking to you back? First John 18, 37, this is what John said. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Right? 1 John 3, 19, as we just read, that reassures us as believers that when we act in love, it's proof that we are abiding in the life that Christ wants for us when we act in love. But what is that life that Christ wants for us? Well, in John 10, 10, this is what he said. He's come to give us life and that we, so that we may have it more abundantly. Jesus wants us to have an abundant life. That's what he wants for us. And do we hear his voice? Because if we do, that's what he's telling us. And, and that's, a, that's good news tonight. If you hear his voice, that's good. Your, heart, your heart's soft. It, it, it's receiving his word. 
And, and so as we, as we looked at the first four, now let's look at our fifth test tonight. Do you have conviction confirmed? Is conviction confirmed? Verse 20, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. You know, point A, do you have an uncomfortable self-judgment? Do you? When you do wrong, does it make you uncomfortable? Do you, do you find yourself judging yourself? You know what? I, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. A believer will be convicted when he or she does something wrong. Why? Why are we convicted? Because God lives in the believer through the Holy Spirit. And here it is. God is perfect. And God is living in us. He cannot have imperfection. So when we mess up, it's not going to sit well. We're going to hear him talking to us. We're going to hear him saying, hey, Randy, you messed up. You might want to get right. You might want to go apologize to that person. Or you might want to come to the altar and leave it there. Right? That's what God wants us to do. And, and through the Holy Spirit, we're going to have conviction. And it's going to be uncomfortable because we've done wrong. That you know, Through the Holy Spirit, we also experience an uncomfortable self-judgment when we sin. Because true salvation results in a, pe- in a person being more sensitive to sin than they were before they were saved. Why? Due to that conviction. And in this verse, John tells us, That God is greater than our heart and that he knows everything. That's what John told us in that verse. And when we sin, we get conviction through the Spirit for that wrong. And the Holy Spirit causes us, it should cause us, to desire to change and to live for Jesus. To live for God. And more so, this this, this verse, it also reminds us that God knows our motives. He knows our thoughts. He does. Why? John said he knows everything. He knows what we're thinking. We can't go in a closet and hide. We, we can't close our Bibles. You know, okay, God doesn't hear me doing this now. You know, God is all-knowing, all-seeing. And as believers, this is something we can take great comfort in, that God lovingly understands our hearts, the good and the bad. He understands us and he loves us anyway. And as we think about all this, as we're going through this heart check, point number six, do you have confidence affirmed? Do you have confidence affirmed? Because uh, John says, beloved, if our heart does, does not condemn us, we have a confidence towards God. You know what? We're right with God. And, and if we have a confidence, do we, point number A, do we have a continuance in doing good? Are we continually trying to do good? Romans 2, 7, Paul tells us that there's eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek glory, seek for glory, honor, and immorality. And you know what? When we have a clear conscience, we can be confident before God. When our conscience is clear, when our heart is clear, you know, and, and our confidence in his love is unconditional for all people. All people. His confidence is, I mean, his love is, it's unconditional. It is unconditional. Uh, John 3, 16, again, for God so loved the world. The world. Not just me. Not just Miss Darling. He loved the whole world. That's why he sent Jesus. Would he have sent Jesus for just you, Joe? Yes, he would have. But he sent Jesus for the whole world. Because he loves us all unconditionally. But here's the thing. The confidence that we have in God's approval, that is conditional. Okay, the, the, That confidence that we have in his pr- approval is conditional. Why is that? Because we have to be in fellowship with God. In order to have that confidence, we've got we've to we've, we've got to be in fellowship with God. We've got to abide in him, as John tells us over and over and over throughout this letter. Abide in God. Are you abiding in God? Abiding in God. He's, he's, dr- he's drilling that message into our head that we have to be abiding in God. Well, 
we, we have to be abiding in him before we can have confidence in, in that aspect of our relationship with God, that God will only approve those things which are according to his will. And again, Romans 2, I already read verse 7, but I'm going to read 7 through 11 because this is, what, uh, this is what Paul tells us. He says, eternal life to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also the Greek. But the glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. God has no partiality. He is going to give his grace to, if you ask for it, he's going to give it to you. The Samaritan, the Gentile, the Jew, the Greek. God does not draw a line in the sand and say, I'm not going to forgive you if you ask for it. So based on the information that John's given us so far, there's no, there's, uh, in, in this letter, we can gauge whether or not we're living according to the will of God. Are we living according to his will? And when we realize we've fallen short, we can rest in God's knowledge and forgiveness. As we learned earlier in the study a couple of weeks ago in 1 John 2, 1, we can rest in the knowledge that we've got an advocate in Jesus Right When we do wrong and when we go before the judgment throne, he's going to say, hey, they're forgiven. They are forgiven. Remember those sins I took up on the cross? Yeah, I did it for you, Jan. You're forgiven. So, and, and with that, we can have confidence instead of shame. We can. Because we also learned that in, in verse 228, that, that God, that, that we have confidence in Jesus. So, we're going to see in the coming weeks, uh, in 1 John 4, 17, John's going to tell us about the work of God's love in us, that that gives us confidence under his judgment. And then when we get to chapter 5, we're going to see that we can have confidence that God hears our prayers. You know what? When we have Jesus truly in our hearts, we can have confidence. And what I really like about John's writing is, He's, he's instilling that in us. He's reminding us of it. He's arming us. He's preparing us for battle. And, you know, a close walk with God leads to humble confidence. You know, Jesus was humble. But here's what humble confidence does for us. It leads to a bold prayer life. When we are humbly confident in our Savior, we can pray boldly, and we can trust that he is going to answer our prayers and, and you know what else? When we have that bold confidence in Christ, we don't have to worry when Christ returns. We don't have to, we don't have to fear that. There's a lost world that, that you know what, they kind of, they're nervous. When we start talking about Jesus coming back and you talk about the rapture, there's fear. Taking the mark of the beast, all those things scare people. We don't have to worry about that. As Christians, we've got the confidence Jesus has taken us out here before that happens. And as crazy as our world is spiraling out of control right now, we ain't seen nothing yet. And guess what? We ain't going to see that crazy because Jesus has promised us he's taken us before all that happens. So while things are crazy, you know, thank God we're not going to be in super crazy. So uh, heart check number seven. Keep this thing moving here tonight. Commandments kept. Are the commandments kept? And in verse 22, he says, And whoever we ask, and whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And as we look at that commandments kept, point A, are you righteous? Do you see yourself as righteous? You know, Psalms 34, and that's not a bad thing, by the way. Psalms 34, 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. And we talked about righteousness a, a, a couple of messages ago, that we should be seeking righteousness. We, we should be trying to be more like Jesus more and more every day, and Jesus is our righteousness. And the more we try to emulate, to imitate, to, to follow Jesus, the more righteous we become. So... If, if you're righteous, that's a good thing. That's a good thing if you see yourself as righteous in Jesus, not as, you know, uh, uh, proud righteous, but as confident righteous. And 
you know, as we saw in verse 21, and it continues into verse 22 here, godly confidence leads to a bold prayer life. It does. This doesn't mean that we can demand anything. You know, uh, when we go to God in prayer, we can't demand that he do something. Uh, you know, I know my kids, if they walked in the room and said, said Dad, I demand you do this, I'd be like, turn your tail around and to your room. You know what? You ask nicely. And, you know, that's when we go to, when we go to our Father, we, we, can, we can pray in confidence, boldly, but not arrogantly. You know what, Lord, we, we're, we've got prayer requests tonight, and we are coming to you, and, and we're trusting that you're going to answer our prayers. And, you know, uh, God is not a genie in a bottle. And we've talked about, you know, we can't rub that lamp, and he comes out, and we just start making prayer requests, and he's going to answer them. And, and he's certainly not a vending machine, you know. Well, I input my... Uh, my prayer, I input it, and, and then I went through and I, I pushed, okay, I want, I want this answer today, A7, because uh, guess what? When we treat prayer like a vending machine, you ever put money in a vending machine and you saw that snack coming and all of a sudden it gets stuck right there, and you're, Row! That's, that's what happens. Sometimes, you know what? If, if we're not in God's will and we're praying, maybe God's going to answer that prayer, but maybe he's going to let that prayer sit right there and let us think about it for a little bit. You know, we, we, we talked about this message a couple of, couple of months back. You know, God answers prayers yes, no, and maybe, or not right now. And, and that's what that vending machine prayer will do for you. It, 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 it's going to get stuck. Sometimes it'll take your change and nothing will happen. So just keep that in mind. But however we receive what we ask, ask for, when it's in agreement and alignment with God's will, it'll happen. You know what? There's a, there's a two-way relationship. And the, and the more we understand the will of God, the more likely that it is that our prayers will be in line with his plans. And effective prayer is twofold. There's two things. Verse 22 tells us. First, a strong prayer life is based on obedience. What did, what did John tell us? Because we keep his commandments, Right? And then secondly, a strong prayer life is based on pleasing God. And we do what pleases Him. That's what John's telling us. We've got to keep His commandments, and we've got to do what pleases Him. And, and if we want to see bold prayers answered, we have to live in obedience, abiding in Him. And so as we go to our eighth heart check tonight, this is probably the, the most important heart check you will ever have, because if you fail this one, it doesn't matter you passed all the others. If you fail this one, we do have the answer for you at the, at the, uh, at the end of the message here tonight. Point number eight, are you conf do you have a confident belief and a confirmed love? Do you have confident belief and, a, and confirmed love? Verse 23 says that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. You know what? Are we keeping his commandments? Those two commandments right there. If we keep those two commandments, everything else will fall into place. Do you have a confident belief in Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you asked him into your heart? And if you have, do you have love for one another? Because that's what comes from a confident belief in Jesus is confirmed love. And point A, grace received. Grace received. Have, have you received grace? Have you asked him into your heart? Because Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. If you've asked Jesus into your heart, you've, you've received grace. You've received that grace. But secondly, do you have love for others? Point B, do you have love for others? And uh, this is uh, what our lifeline looks like right here. If you've got Christ, here it is. You're, you're reading your, your cardiogram tonight, and... We see that we've got some activity in our heart, but hey, we asked Jesus into it. There's the cross right there. And from Jesus, we got activity going on. And guess what? We've got love for others. You got Jesus. You got love for others. You got a clear cardiogram so far. That's good news. That is good news. Because Jesus told us in John 13, 34, 15, 12, and 15, 17, this is what he said, that you love one another. 
Three times, three times he says that, that you love one another. And I love that cardiogram because before we can love others, we got to have Jesus. We get Jesus, we are going to love. We are going to love others. Our heart's going to be soft. It's going to be receiving. It's going gonna, it's gonna to want to give. And with that, you know what? If you can say yes to point number eight, point number nine, is your cardiogram complete? Verse 24, this is what, this is what uh, John tells us for a, a cardiogram complete, a completed cardiogram. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. And as we read that last scripture in chapter 3, as we finish up chapter 3, point A, do you have the manifestation of Christ? Point A, the manifestation of Christ. Because John 14, 21, this is what Jesus tells us. Jesus says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's what Jesus tells us. And then point B, are you one with the Father and Son? Are you one? John 17, 21, this is what Jesus said again here. He says that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they may also be one in us. Are you one with the Father and the Spirit? Can you say that? And finally, point C, do you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Because verse 14, 17 of John, this is what John, this is what Jesus said. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. You know, this final verse of chapter 3 concludes with a reminder that obedience is tied to abiding. We've got to remain in fellowship with God. And to abide or to continue in God includes obedience, believing in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and loving one another. It's so, so important to pass this heart test. And John is repeating what Jesus taught us as the greatest commandment, to love God, and the next greatest is to love your neighbor as yourself. He told us that in Matthew 22, beginning in verse 37. You gotta love God and you gotta love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two greatest commandments. And if you're following those commandments, you are in God. You are you are one with God. These final two verses in chapter three, the, the last two that we read also mention the three persons of the Trinity. And tonight I uh, I'd, I'd try to find some scrubs or a doctor's jacket, a stethoscope to come, come in with tonight to present this message so it looked a little more healthy. But, but you know what? We've got a triune doctor. We've got, we've got God the Father. That's our doctor. We've got Christ Jesus. That's our doctor. And we've got the Holy Spirit. That's, we've got three doctors in one that love us. They want the best for us. They've given us the prescription for great health. They've given us the prescription or not for a healthy heart. And if you can answer all nine questions, yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, because those nine, nine checking points, uh, you know what? They all point to the influence of the Holy Spirit and proof points that a person has been saved. Christians who choose not to abide in his will, that, you know, they're going to have a lack of influence from the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, it, it could be an indication that you might need some help. So some of those checkpoints that maybe you couldn't check off, eight is the most important one, but any one of those... You might have a hard heart, and you might need some help. And then thank God, because uh, there's three little letters at the bottom of your outline tonight. C-P-R. You want to know what that stands for? Christ provides redemption. And if you were saved, Christ provided redemption. 
But tonight, he does. He provides redemption. So if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, and as we went through this heart test, you, you, you said maybe on a couple. You said, yeah, I, I think on that one. You said, oh, absolutely, I, I, I think I failed that one. You know what? You can, you can receive that CPR that you need tonight. And, and if you checked yes on every one of them, you can thank God for the CPR that he gave you the day that you asked Jesus into your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight we are so thankful for your CPR, Lord, your, your Christ-provided redemption. But Lord, tonight we also we, we pray for those who, who may not truly know you, those who went through this checklist tonight and, and questioned one, two, several, maybe all of them. Lord, we pray that tonight that they would accept the redemption that you provide, the CPR that you have for them. Christ provides redemption to you tonight if you're lost. And maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know what lost means. Well, lost means that you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that you've never truly trusted in him as your Savior. And if you're watching online tonight and you've never truly made that decision, if you're here tonight and you've never truly made that decision, you can do that simply by asking Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord and to be your Savior and to help you, help you accept his love, help you love others, help you share the good news because Christ is in the saving business. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your word. We're thankful that you've provided that Christ provided CPR, that redemption that you provide through Christ. Thank you for the CPR. The, the heart check that we have, help us to apply this to our lives. Maybe this is a message that we could share with others and just ask them, you know what, have you had a heart check? Let me, let me go through some of these points with you. Because our lost, there's a lost world out there that needs CPR so badly. Lord, help us be the medics. Help us be your assistants. Dr. Jesus, Dr. God the Father, and, and Dr. Holy Spirit, please help us be your assistants in sharing the good news of the cure that you have for the lost sinner. Thank you, Lord, and it's in your name we pray. Guys, as we break up into our prayer meetings, let's remember that CPR for those that are in need, and let's remember those prayer requests that we talked about tonight. And, and thank y'all for being here. God bless you. Uh, you've blessed me. And it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. God bless you. I love you.